This is the Making Waves Mindset Show with your hosts, Richard DiBiase and Dave Moskowitz. Learn from our journey as we share the ups and downs of being your own boss. All right, we are back for another episode of the Making Waves Mindset Show. And Dave, we have a special guest from the United States, Giuseppe Grammatico. Thank you for being with us. Thank you. Guys, thank you. Thank, thanks for having me. Really, yeah. really appreciate it. Another international episode as we're uh, as we, when you guys were on my show. So looking forward. Yeah, to it. that's right. It's always <laughs> good to look south of the border. That, that's it. <laughs> yeah. No, it's a, it's a pleasure to have you. We uh, for those listeners, we were just on Giuseppe's show not too long ago, and it was really cool to to be into that space and to understand Giuseppe comes from traditionally the franchise world and is a mentor, a business owner in that space. And we thought, why not have somebody just as perfect come onto our show and share his journey because you were also in the nine to five and you decided, you know what, this wasn't for me. I have new opportunities and aspirations in life and you made the transition. So Giuseppe, the floor is yours. Let us know where it started, where it went and how those changes happen. You made waves. So that's what we love to hear. Waves. That's it. Yeah. Big waves. So no, I appreciate, <laughs> I, I, I appreciate that. So nine to five, that's an understatement. It was more like five, to, 5 AM to whenever I got home, yeah. 10 PM. Oh, so, geez. but uh, yeah, now I, for, for everyone listening in, just a little backstory of, of kind of where I'm at. Um, grew up in the restaurant business. My family owned the business. Uh, First generation, uh, you know, in this country, learned English at the age of six, uh, six or seven. I always forget, oh, wow. and was brought up. You know, got to go to school. First person in my family to get a college degree, which which I was. Ended up getting my my master's and get a great corporate job that paid really well, so I didn't have to work so many hours in a business uh, in, in the in the restaurant. You know, so went did all that. Tried different jobs. Had a ridiculous, ridiculously long commute of five hours round trip every day, door to door, Ooh. which uh, I still remember Jeez. those days. Five hours um, <laughs> in my nine to five and saw the people, just was not happy. You know, was trying different interviews and trying, you know, maybe, maybe I have to work for this company or maybe if my commute was a little bit shorter, saw the people on my bus commuting, almost got a, uh, 20 year vision of where I was going to be. And they were just not happy and just uh, miserable would be an understatement. And I said, there's got to be more to this. Um, love the idea of business ownership. My family were business owners. They just worked a lot of hours, nights, weekends, and holidays. But there are other businesses out there, but I didn't know where to start. And uh, fast forward, I, I work with a business coach and the business coach said, you know, what color is your parachute from the famous book? And she said, the color of your parachute is, is systems in place. I'll never forget that. You like yeah. systems in place. And I said, okay. And she said, franchising is systems in place, right? They're built for you day one. So I uh, reached out to a franchise coach and consultant, just like what I do today. And uh, they were able to kind of walk me through what franchising was, if it was a good fit, and the different systems in place to reach the goals and the goals were simply to be home to see my children. Um, you know, my first, my, my son was born back in November of 07. And uh, I wanted to make that transition. So I was home to see them when they woke up, put them to bed. And then fast forward a few years after that, take them to soccer practice and actually become their coach. So, wow. um, so those are my, those are my goals. Those are my whys. And I said, well, how do I, how do I, this is what I want. How do I get to that point? And a franchise was a, was a great fit personally for me, but maybe not a good fit for somebody else. So, yeah, that's 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 very interesting, you know. And we 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 talk about the importance of trying to find that that coach, somebody to help guide you, because there's so much stress and everything around you is very cloudy. You don't know what to do, and then you get bounced back with, "Well, family says it's safe. Just keep working for a pension. It's okay here." But you're like, "No, I need to burst the bubble. I'm going to find somebody who's an expert in the space," and you you did it. You know, like that's, that's, that's the best way to get started. We keep saying yeah. that. I think a coach, a mentor, whoever yeah. that person is, be selective in who you're of speaking course. with, yeah. right? If you're asking for business advice and that person has never owned a yeah. business, you know, maybe not, not, not to say they don't have great advice and that, that they can't help you, but speak with someone that actually went through it, but not just a successful business owner, yeah. right? What does successful mean? It's not to me, 
I'm successful. I don't make billions and, and hundreds of millions of dollars every year. Yeah. I'm successful because to my standard is that I can work from home and be around for my family. That's how I That's categorize right. success. If you, ca if, if you look at the person with the Ferraris and the, the big houses, that's great. Maybe millions in the, in the bank, but they're working 24 seven. I don't envy that, you know, align with and, and, and talk to people, get, seek advice from people that are kind of in your situation are, are looking for the same things. You, you guys align, speak with them. And I think that's, uh, aside from doing your research online, that person will be able to directly help you and, or put you in contact with other people. What what were some of the things that w you were going through in your personal life when you got to the point where you're like, okay, I need to leave my corporate world and go into this? Was it just because of that mentor or what was happening through that transition? What did you do to prepare yourself? So it's sort of a two part question. Right. Pre prepare to, so to prepare myself, it was not, it was not easy, right? It wasn't a, an easy decision. I had the, I was fortunate and still I'm, my, my wife works. So I was able to leave my job full time because I wanted to go all in. Just like when I went back to grad school, I quit my job. I, I was all in and you know did it in a year. Same thing with business ownership. I wanted to give 100% of my attention and, and there was no plan B. This, this had to work. There was no going back to, to the corporate world. So I um, had support from my wife. That's, not, that's the, one of the best pieces of advice. Mm -hmm. Speak with your family. Uh, my children weren't born then. If you have kids, let them know, you know, this is an endeavor I'm taking on. I may not be around uh, for dinner or every soccer game or whatever your yeah. kids are into in the very beginning. So um, keeping your, your, your family um, informed, I think, is a big thing and just getting getting buy in from everyone. But um, there was a lot of anxiety, a lot of stress. You know, I was I was online doing research. I was talking with my coach and you can literally do research for the rest of your life and just be in research mode. So analysis paralysis, analysis paralysis. <laughs> and depending on what rabbit hole you go into, you know, you're going to, people are going to scare you. People are, people are going to really motivate you. So it, it's tough. So, um, figure out what you want. No one can tell you there's no right or wrong, right? If you want to work three days a week and, and, and have a four day weekend, and this is what you want, write that down, you know, and mm -hmm. then aim, aim for that goal. But there was a lot of fear, a lot of, a lot of anxiety, but anxiety, the symptoms of anxiety are, are the same as excitement, right? Yes. Heart beating quicker, you know, maybe, maybe sweating a little bit. So, uh, I just said, if I don't make this change now, I'm, I'm going to be in the same boat. I made gr really good money in, in the position I was in, but I'm, I'm going to make maybe a lot more money, hopefully, but still, you know, not be home at a decent time. So, I said, if I don't do it now before my first child is born, when am I going to do it? It's never going to be this right time, right? right. It's going to be kids are young, not a good time. Kids are in high school, got to save for college. It, it's it's never a perfect time. So I always say, you know, what, it, what it, I think it was Warren Buffett or someone said that the best time to plant a tree is today, right? Mm -hmm. You want to get, you want to establish that, get going, get moving, grow, learn from your, your mistakes. So um, it was, it was definitely an exciting time, a stressful time. In making that decision, especially when my colleagues were like, what are you, you're leaving this job to do, to do what? And, um, they could not accept it. And now, uh, I have received calls from numerous colleagues <laughs> saying, Hey, uh, that franchise thing that yeah. you did, um, how do I, how do I get into that? So exactly. <laughs> Funny, okay. eh? All the, no, all the no's, right. All the no's, <laughs> no's, no's, naysayers. And then all of a sudden they're calling you now. Now come back and say, what, how do I, how do I get out of here? And I'm like, it's, you know, 15 years later, I'm like, you're still there. And then like, yeah, I'm still here. I'm just not, uh, not happy. So yeah. read my book, right? Read my book. <laughs> <laughs> we'll start there. Yeah. So it sounds like just the first year though, was still some of the similarities of leaving that nine to five, but understanding mm -hmm. that you're that much closer to your why, and it's not going to be overnight success. And that's, I think, the key for the listeners is that you're still going to have to put in the effort. You might miss that dinner. You might have yeah. to do some obligation. A lot of things are online now, which can still ground you at home. But, you know, be prepared for the continual effort. You can't just stop and go, OK, you know, I'm at home now. Everything's fine. It doesn't work like that. You need to keep yeah. pushing. Make that decision. Yeah. Right. And celebrate yeah. that. You made the decision to leave and start to, you know, that that's a huge milestone. Right. That's you made the decision. Now, what's next? And there's a lot of work franchise or not. It, it's still a lot of work. There's not, there's this question I get, well, with the franchises, it's so much easier. And I said, well, 
it's not easier. You have a system built, but you still have to go out there and promote your business, oversee the marketing. You're still hiring employees and things like that. And you'd have to maintain happy customers. But um, yeah, it, it's, it's setting that expectation. Be prepared not to pay yourself, yeah. right? I was getting paid every other week. I didn't pay myself for the first several months. So I knew that. But actually going through that is, is another experience in and of itself where yeah. we had money coming in from my, my from my wife, but at the same time, not just the physical not getting that that direct deposit into my checking account <laughs> that that hurts That's and true. telling someone and then experiencing are two different things. So, yes, it was fine. I, I set the expectation. My wife knew what what to expect. We put our, our heads down and said, let's let's fast forward in, in 12 months. This is where I want to be. And. It worked out really well. It was just getting that first year. I kind of was MIA for the first 12 months because my focus was truly on, on building that business. What, what would be some of the things that you look back and say, you know what, I should have done it this way. Or now that you know where you are now, looking back then, what would you have changed? What would I have changed? Um, you can't. This is something I learned, unfortunately, later on, but you can't be an expert in all areas, right? So with marketing, I was trying to figure out social media and the marketing because times are a little lean in the, in the first six months. And I was trying to do so much of that. Whereas if I just sucked it up and just hired uh, a professional or an employee that, that can handle that type of work, we may have been, we may have grown a little bit faster. So not looking at that as an expense of more of an investment, you know, in the marketing and, and those key employees. So, um, you know, as a business owner, you can't be an expert in all areas. You are going to hire people that are better at you in marketing and things like that. So that, that would be number one. And then just as a business owner, you're getting pulled in all different directions. And just remember, it's all about the journey. You know, you can't, yes, you have certain goals and milestones and, did I hit them every year? Absolutely not. I wish I did. There were close years. There were some years where you had a year with COVID, you know, which yeah. throws everything up in the air and, and obviously um, what didn't go as, as expected. So just accept things, take, take all your wins, um, just appreciate it. But really having those right, either the marketing company, or the right employees in place and building your team, uh, which I talk about in my book, which was, was another thing where going back to people, having your key people in place. So that's for, for me and, and what I advise everyone on is having your financial advisor, having your certif you know, your financial um, uh, CPA, your attorney, having those three members, which I, I always did, but the, the issue was they would never talk to one another. So my second go around, okay, let me start with my financial advisor. And then they referred me to people that they work with so that if I ever have a question, they can say, Give us, give us an hour or a day. We're going to do a quick conference call to discuss what is the best solution Huge. given your circuit, uh, your circumstances. So I, I talk about that in my book with whatever you end up deciding on, even if it's not even a business, if you decide to keep your job, um, having that team in place, because you never know what the future brings. So I, I think that's, uh, that's key. Um, it's There's refreshing to hear that. Things. Yeah, <laughs> it's refreshing to hear that because we've di we've discussed it even in the real estate world is trying to get that that lawyer together with the accountant mm -hmm. together. Everyone needs to be on the same process because if they're not, this is where you end up with the the side dirt roads and you're not becoming successful and focused at your business growth. Yeah. It's a it's a holistic approach. It's kind of like yeah. going to the doctor and you're complaining about chest pain, so maybe you go to a cardiologist, or maybe the underlying issue is something completely maybe it's not you don't have heart issues maybe it's because you're stressed sad and you need to meditate or you need to do certain other things so we look at a holistic approach like when someone comes to me looking for a franchise you know we're not a, a franchise salesperson we're a coach and consultant so what are your goals and they're like well what does that have to do with a franchise and i go it has everything to do with a franchise we need to make sure it's a good fit but do you have family? Are you creating a legacy for your children and for your for future generations? Do you want to keep your job? Do you want to leave your job? There's so many different things that we we ask and look into. It's not about what's the hot franchise um, and and selecting it. I tell everyone, you don't need me for that. You could pick up Entrepreneur Magazine, and there's a whole list that you can choose from. So, uh, but a true holistic approach to anything we do, I think, is is crucial. When you were when you were originally starting, you would plan 
right? You'd plan for six months, three months, mm -hmm. one year, five years. Has that changed? Has your planning of your career, your business, has that changed? Have you narrowed it? Has you have you expanded it? What does that look like? The plan. So the that's a good, great, a really good question. Um, so the planning is always there. I just think the goals. Um, that's something that's changed because in the past it was grow, 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 um, and just taking a step back. I have sold my other businesses. I focus 100 percent of my time right now on the coaching and consulting business, although always looking for a future endeavor, future investment. But it was always grow, you know, grow by 50 percent grow. Now it's it's much different in my practice. Now it's more of I still plan, but the goals aren't to grow every year. It's to work with less people. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, Dan Sullivan from strategic coach talks about the four freedoms, financial freedom talks about time, freedom, mm -hmm. uh, talks about the, um, the freedom of working with people that you enjoy working with, right. Yeah. Selecting your team and, and the people, and then there's the freedom of purpose and having a true purpose. So, uh, I really, the, the time freedom is key. I don't want to work 60 hours or 80 yeah. hours a week. I want to try to keep my um, you know, uh, my day nine to five, having weekends, taking lots of time off where I can really disconnect. Um, so my biggest thing is working with less people that I can truly, that, that really want to work with me. You know, people that want a little information on franchising, no problem. We have a podcast, we have a book, we set them up for success for, and, and for a future follow-up, but really working with people that are ready to make that change, right? I can't, make that decision for them. But I, I, I basically tell them you, you could do your research, but you need that pressing that, that why that motivation, right? Whether positive, negative, it's a combination, but you need that motivation in order to make that change or else you'll just sit on this and think about it. And until the franchise is probably sold out territory, then look at something else. So you need that pressing why to make the change. I think Giuseppe, we should kind of maybe focus on that franchise for a little bit. Um, that whole directional path. You're the first guest that we've ever had on our program, on our show with experience in that field. And this might be totally new for everyone. So I'm gonna let you have the floor here. Let's talk about what a franchise is a little bit more in depth and maybe some of the things that you experienced in those early journeys, if that was something that you decided to do as a business yourself. So no, great. So I'll, I'll, I'll kind of go through it. Um, so there's, close to 4,000 franchise companies out there. Uh, a franchise is simply a proven system. You, you're purchasing a license and a proven business model. Not every franchise is built the same. Okay. So when I tell everyone, if you're looking at franchising, there's a franchise in every industry. So the value proposition, the business is built for you to run with. So it's not a pro or a con. It's either that's what you're looking for. You want everything kind of set up for you in the very beginning which is what I wanted so I can run with it. Or there's that startup guy, that, that, that person that wants to create the logo and the brand and the product and service from scratch. Nothing wrong with either. Or the issue I see with a lot of people at startup is that that document sits on their laptop for a decade. And now you're, you, now you're talking about the time value of money. You've sat on it. Whereas sometimes people want that franchise to get them motivated. Maybe they start with the franchise because the franchise or they have a vested interest for you to grow. So maybe it takes that franchise for you to get motivated to maybe do that startup a year later. You know, you could do both, which is, which is the beauty of franchising. So um, with systems in place, you know, it, it's basically, okay, this is our CRM. This is the, the marketing vendor. These are the preferred vendors that we can use. Uh, I was in the commercial cleaning and, and building maintenance space. We had vendors that we um, uh, would purchase our supplies from that was pre- uh, negotiated rates, right. On, onto what supplies we got a national discount since we were a national company. Um, you know, we got to get uh, preferential rates on insurance because like, I, again, we were national, but walking into that business, I was able to sell day one right after training because everything was in place. I had a sales manual. I knew I had listings of how to go about, um, hiring people. So I went out, was getting my, I got my first contract day one, believe it or not. It was a small oh. contract, very small contract, but it was a great win because it's like, wow, this is doable from someone that was, you know, first time franchise owner. So, uh, so franchising is, is essentially, I don't call it an industry. It's more of a, a proven business model. 
Um, all investment ranges. It's not all fast food, big, big yeah. myth, right? It's McDonald's and Wendy's and all these things. There are franchises and cleaning, employment services, which is big, business coaching, uh, pet waste removal. I mean, <laughs> mos mosquito spraying. I mean, the, li the list goes yeah. on. So and and one thing, and I, and I talk about this all the time, is people approach me and they say, well, a passion of mine is X. It's, it's cars. And I said, that's great. And what do you have in the, in the motor vehicle industry? And I, and I always say, let's, let's take a step back there. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with passion, but what we should really focus on is what are you trying to accomplish with this franchise? Mm -hmm. And they take a step back and say, well, I want to spend more time with my family and vacation, but on my downtime, I like to, to, to work on my, on my 1970 must, whatever yeah. Mustang or whatever they're, whatever they're working on. I'm not, I'm not personally a car guy, but uh, yeah, so I, I get that a lot. And I tell people a business will create time for that. So mm -hmm. why don't we focus on a business that will free up your nights and weekends and allow you to take off whenever you want so that you can spend your downtime on that. So, you know, when you focus too much on the passion, that passion becomes a job. You can, mm -hmm. that, you can easily, as, as it happened to me, burn a passion, which had personally happened to me years ago. So, um, the people that want a, that left to play golf, that buy a golf franchise, nothing against golf franchises, but you're not in golf. No. You're in retail. Yeah. Your nights, weekends, holidays, long hours, lots of turnover. So, what you know you were playing golf at your job if your goal is to play golf maybe just stay at the job because you have a hell of a lot more time yeah. than when you get into a retail franchise so um so that's some of the advice uh, on on what franchising is they're not all built the same so when i work with someone we give them lists of questions to ask because some franchises are brand new some of them are doing really well because maybe it's a fad or a trend or they have maybe 20 franchisees, but you know, kind of in our business, you have two milestones, 50 and 100. Once you hit 50 and then later 100, that's the true test. Um, does this franchise or have the infrastructure to, to yeah. support us and, and to help us grow and, and, and answer our questions, come out and coach us if we're having issues? So you know, that's, that's what you're looking for in a franchise. Can they support me? The benefit you have is you can ask, you know, tens, 20, hundreds of franchisees, you know, knowing what you know now, would you make the same decision? Are you getting support from your franchisee? And now you have the added benefit of saying, what did the franchise or help uh, do to help you during COVID? It takes the guesswork for our listeners and, and followers. It takes the guesswork out of wanting to be the entrepreneur, making waves. The product is there. Like you say, it's the system and you run with it all the support mechanisms over there. So it does give some of our, our members a peace of mind. Yeah. And, and the big, and the big question I get from the uh, people working nine to five in their corporate job, can I keep my job and have a business that, that is probably I'd say 75% of my calls. Um, wow. I work, I work with existing business owners as well, but those are probably 75%. And I said, absolutely. Yes. But keeping in mind, there is going to be a lot of work up front to get the business up and running. This is not, okay, I'm just going to do an hour here, an hour there. It's still a business. It's just that you may have a little bit higher startup cost because you may hire a general manager or someone to replace you at least part-time mm -hmm. uh, to get started. But some people prefer the flexibility of keeping their job. I always question, why do you want to keep your job? Yeah. Some people financially maybe just can't afford it. Some people are just scared. So we talk, talk through exactly why. And my fir first business, I, I, I want to hold on to my health benefits. So we talk through that. But you can absolutely do that. But not every franchise company will allow that. So I'll repeat. It's not about having lots of money and you could buy any franchise. The franchise companies, when speaking with them, they'll, they're going to be interviewing you. So if you're, if you're going to tell them, I'm, leaving my, uh, I'm not going to leave my job, they may come back and say, okay, hold on a second. We require our franchisees. We've noticed our successful franchisees are full-time. So we're going to require you to be full-time or else th this is not going to work. It's a relationship. So it is. Yeah. Absolutely. They, they, you're an extension of their brand. So they want to make sure that there's a solid relationship. You're professional as they are professional. You know, you're going to be interviewing the mm -hmm. franchise company as well. But uh, you can absolutely keep your job and have a business. 
semi-absentee, we classify 10 to 20 hours a week, roughly. And then that obviously hopefully scale back from there. But, uh, and there are certain franchises that thrive in that environment. They have specific trainings specifically. They help you even some, some franchises will actually help you find your general manager. Wow. Not just give you the posting, they will help you in some cases interview you at least one call uh, to help you find your general manager. So there are tons of options out there. Um, there's, 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 so I, I, I kind of classify it this way. If you're deciding about business ownership, just make that decision. If it's yes, are you going startup? Are you going franchise or license? Make that decision on, on what direction. There are funding options. There are, you know, semi-absentee ownership. There's essentially a franchise business for any any type of startup. But just make that first decision, and then we'll get you to kind of looking at the different franchises out there. Amazing, amazing. That's great. Great options, right? And this is something that people who are working in that nine to five are probably in the back of their head thinking, okay, I, I've reached this hamster wheel, and I need to get out of here. What do I do? Where do I go? So this option is, is probably a great option for people to look at mm -hmm. because then they can make those decisions while they're still employed, make those decisions and say, okay, I need to do X, Y, Z education, or I need to start looking at my finances and getting those all in order right. so that I can gear up to actually quit or, you know, go to part-time potentially in, in the business that they're in. Absolutely. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely has some homework to your point uh, with homework, get your financials in order. Some people I talk to have no idea what net worth means. You know, it's look, get your accounts. What's your home market value? You can use equity in your home to, to fund this. Um, so yes, get every, get everything in order. Um, speak with someone. Does, I'm not the only franchise coach and consultant. Um, reach out to someone, work with someone you enjoy working with. And the best part, and it's not just for the listeners, it's for everyone. Our service is free to you. So there is no catch. We get paid from the franchise companies only if you invest in a franchise. So I think it's a true no brainer. I think it's, mm -hmm. we're here to help. I'm a product of, of the service I offer. I work with a coach and consultant and in 2007, not it didn't purchase one. I purchased two uh, franchises back in 07 and uh, I can absolutely help you do the same. Now with the experience I have on both ends of business ownership can really help you and make that decision um, if franchising is a good fit. Mm -hmm. And just to speak about the franchise, actual franchise and running it, what was the, the wins that you found? Was it, um, was it your business attitude towards it or was it just following process? Following the process, being open. Um, you know, some people have experience in a certain industry and that could be good and bad because you may be kind of, I, we did it this way when I had my startup or I work here but now you're telling me to do it completely different. So I think having a positive and open kind of attitude saying, okay, I'm, I'm here to learn, tell me the best way and following the system. Yeah. Because if your intention is not to follow the system, don't buy a franchise. The number one reason for failure, in my opinion, from my experience is people buy a franchise and don't follow the system. Why would you do that? Why would you invest in that, fran that one-time franchise fee to not follow it. So, um, you know, if you're not going to follow, don't buy a franchise. Uh, they also purchased the wrong franchise, I think is another reason, right? They just said, Oh, my, my cousin is making a lot of money owning a subway. I'm going to buy it as well. Well, is that a, he's making good money He or she's making good money, but is it a good match for you? Is it aligned with, with your goals and what you're looking to do? So, um, those are kind of the two main reasons. And it's, it's a quick for, for anyone listening, if they don't want to follow the system, I, I would just encourage them not to explore franchising because that is the, the value proposition. Um, you are not, you know, you are allowed to, your personality can come out and you're allowed to use their marketing. And if you like podcasts, you can have a podcast. Uh, you don't have to just do online marketing or just social media posts. You do have flexibility, but there is a system that they want you to follow a product or service that you're going to be selling it as well. So if you buy a, uh, I don't know, a, a pizza franchise and you want to sell tacos out of, out of that same franchise, um, maybe not, maybe not a good fit. Um, right. you know, you can own a, another business and maybe an add on business, but you don't want to, your intention is not to go in looking to change their system. Right. 
Giuseppe, do you see a lot of cross-border investors who want to purchase franchises? I know, you know, initially, I think during our recording, we had spoken, my wife and I have an interest in at some point trying to diversify and whether we open a business in the U.S. and or continue to invest in real estate down that way. But do you see a lot of that cross-border stuff or are you really in your current business world? It's a lot of Americans who are just generally focused within there, within the United States. Yeah, so um, p- uh, pre- predominantly the bit my business is in the U.S. I cover the whole country, but we also um, work with candidates in Canada. So uh, not not all our franchise uh, companies that we work with are registered uh, in Canada. So, uh, but those are the two countries we work with. We don't not to say there there aren't franchises, obviously internationally, sure. yeah. but I I focus on the U.S. Uh, and Canada. But yes, I do work with a handful of people from uh, from Canada. We just always have to do a check as to. Um, what is available in that particular country. Uh, but yes, we, we work with people, U.S. and Canada. And I see a lot of inter- international, a lot of master franchises, kind of where people will, you know, maybe a U.S.-based or a Canadian-based company a franchise, and you have an investor maybe buy the entire country of Italy and rep- and be the main, essentially the franchisor in the country of Italy, yep. and then and then find franchisees that work beneath them. So um, you tend to see that, but I definitely could put you in touch with, with people if that, if you have any international listeners, yeah, Amazing. That's incredible. or I should say outside of the U S and Canada. Right. <laughs> so I think one thing that we could do to kind of mold on out the conversation, Giuseppe, you have a book franchise freedom. You'd like to talk about it and, uh, hopefully that will give our followers a different direction because I think today we've, we've really look at the whole picture, you know, this is where you came from. You decided to make an action. You found this to be the avenue to go. And now you're that mentor and coach in the field. It's a whole different business mindset, right. but there's still similarities. And so let's talk about, let's talk about that book. Yeah. So, so the book, I appreciate that. So the, the book is Franchise Freedom. And, and I also have a podcast called Franchise Freedom. Kept them the same, kept them simple. <laughs> That's good. You have, you have people that like to read and people that, that like to listen. So we did an audio version as well. And it's a, it's a blueprint. It's a guide. So uh, it's a, about a 30 minute read, 48 pages, and it's a quick reference guide in figuring out if business ownership and then franchise ownership is the right fit. Talks about the my entire process. Uh, so for someone that wants to, to read the book before speaking with me or reaching out, but it talks about reverse engineering the process. And instead of looking at a business or a franchise, going back and figuring out, do you want a business? Why? What are you looking to accomplish? And what does uh, that that blank canvas? What does the ideal business look like? And you, what does your ideal life look like? Yeah. Is it working from home nine to five, no nights and weekends, no employees? I mean, we can get as specific as you want. Uh, and so it talks about just reverse engineering the process, working in reverse. That way, you can have a life in business that to match exactly what you're looking for. Versus, <clears throat> excuse me, looking at a business just say in, in retail or fast food and saying, okay, like the business, but I don't want to work nights and weekends, but I'll suck it up because that's what that business requires. And oh, by the way, lots of turnover in that business. I'll suck it up as well. Now, all of a sudden you have a business that looks completely different of what you were looking at. So this is, and we talk about building teams. We talk about um, reverse engineering the process, not just in business, but in just all avenues of, of, of life. You know, what, what do I want? And then how do I get there? So don't don't be consumed when you talked about advice. I've learned, don't be consumed of how to get there necessarily. Figure out what you want your life to look like, to, to, to be like. Do you want to live on, uh, on the beach? Do you want to you know, be living and have a second home in another country? Figure all that out. And then we figure out the how. And the who, how am I going to get there and who is going to help me get there? So I am, I can help you with the who, whether I can help you directly or put you in touch with maybe a business broker, because we figure out franchising isn't the right fit. You know, having that, you know, you know, hopefully I'm on your, that team that we, we kind of created for you. So the book is a guide. Uh, again, we have the, the, the podcast again, different topics on, on different episodes. You guys were on, uh, we had uh, launched the show last week. So we talk about various process, you know, uh, topics. You left the nine to five. What did that, you know, what did that, uh, yeah, uh, process look like? You know, the uh, the pros and cons to that. So um, the website is GG, my initials because it's so hard to spell. The franchise guide.com. 
go on there. The, we have a work, a video workshop. We have our, our podcast and we have under resources, our book. It's a free download and I encourage everyone take a look at it and then just, you know, send me a message right through the website. And if you have a general question or if you'd like to set up a call, I'm here to help and point you in the right direction. Amazing. Amazing. So Giuseppe, as we close, one of our models is to take action. What can you tell our listeners to do, whether they're thinking of leaving, already have left, or are in your position experts? What is one thing that they can do today to take action that can just push them? Like, you got to do it. The analysis paralysis affects all of us. You know, sometimes Dave and I, we're trying to research certain things. We're like, we've spent way too much time on this. There's no time. Execute. Just do it. Get right. it done. Little tidbit. What can we leave our listeners with? That, that's it. Get it done. I, I'd say make that decision. Yeah. You know, maybe it's just the, it's just the, um, what do you call it? the exercise of that blank canvas of what your life looks like, but make the decision. If you aren't happy and a bit and a business is that solution to, to really kind of help you yeah. get there, make the decision. You don't have to select the franchise or the startup or have a date in mind, but just make that decision that you will leave. I always recommend doing it on a Saturday or Sunday. I feel like I get an extra hour or two sleep. <laughs> on the weekend so you're less stressed right you don't want to do it in the middle of the day no today is friday whenever this show long, you know goes live but make the decision sleep in maybe a saturday or sunday morning have an hour to yourself map out what the life looks like make the decision yes i am going to make that change and then okay so that's kind of step one and then step two is what am i going to do whether it's reach out to myself read the book reach out to a, another business owner at bare minimum and, and ask about their experiences and advice uh, do that baby steps right you have the end goal but you have to make little goals as well so do that reach out to someone i think those two um, pieces of advice i think are game changers and then from there it's a snowball effect you start talking to more people start getting more educated and then the anxiety level starts to drop because now you're educated and you can make an informed decision great tips great tips love it Giuseppe, it's been a pleasure once Absolutely. again. Thank it's been you. Great to have you on our show. Thank you. Thanks for having me, and I appreciate it. And uh, look, looking forward to uh, speaking again soon. Yeah, Thanks, for guys. sure. Thank, Thank you. you.